I don't really want to talk um, about this. I don't need to talk about the sponsor, but the whole point of this is um, so they're in it. Yeah, um, it's an experiment because it's my first sponsor, and I wanted to. Um, I basically pitched the idea that you can have this package, or this package, and then the sort of more advanced package. I'll wear your T-shirt. <laughs> so I didn't think about that. It actually, becomes quite difficult when I have ad hoc stuff. Yeah, where I don't know who's going to sponsor it. So I might have to have like a t-shirt sponsor mm. and a sponsor sponsor. I don't know. I'll look at that. Yeah. Right. You could do like a funny video for it though. How do you mean? So, uh, do you ever watch like me swapping shirts? <laughs> I just make another shirt. You, just you, should, you should literally be like, oh shit, I forgot the sponsor. And then like put the shirt on and then like, it's just be funny because then people, um, it'll be more recognisable than you. Yes, it's more noticeable. Yeah. Oh, I got some coffee stain on the yeah, on yeah. t-shirt. Let me just, let me just <laughs> You should off. always make it like, like you accidentally done it and then like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Over-exaggerate, being really melodramatic. And then like, I think people will like that. They'll be like, oh, okay. Um, there's a guy on, or couple on YouTube who are called Mango Street and they do like, their ads are, they think about it. So they're sponsored by Squarespace quite a lot. And they like, um, do like an old school MTV dating show. Yeah. Where it's like the three guys trying to date the one girl. And it's like, I, I use uh, custom plugins, da 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 da. And then like talking about all the benefits of uh, WordPress and then, oh, Squarespace. And then, yeah, it's quite interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's the tricky thing with, with um, adverts and sponsorship is how far do you go? Because you can, you can have something which where the whole um, advert, the whole part of the show really becomes the advert. Mm. I'm, I'm trying to think of the, the guy's name. It's a podcast I listen to. He's uh, like an aging comedian, but he, he's someone I, I sort of grew up with. But he's a musician as well. So he, he writes music for the sponsor ads mm -hmm. as well throughout. That's um, cool. Adam Buxton, that's his name. Okay. Yeah. Um, Do you have to say anything specific with your sponsors? Um, no, they gave me a few talking points that I asked for. Yeah. No, it was just... Um, you know, the fast, manage, and secure. That's the key things yeah. that people want. It, it was actually quite interesting because I wanted, I wanted to make sure I spoke about all of the key things. Mm. But we use them. Yeah. So we, yeah, we yeah, use yeah. it for the majority of our clients. So it's really not difficult for me no. to talk about it. And everything they say there is true. Yeah. So I'm not having to lie. But it's, it's still difficult. I want to script it or at mm. least write down the key points so I don't miss anything. No. But the thing is, it probably wouldn't matter. No. Because each ad, every time you read the ad, it's slightly different. And mm. you're just going to be talking about something that's relevant at the time. Or, or um, maybe there's a case study or an example of a client where mm. using them solved the, the problem. What, oh, yeah. what is it that they do? So they do hosting. Oh, okay. Um, specifically, we, got, we um, well, I, I use them because it's WordPress hosting. It's what they do really mm. well. And I liked it because we were looking for another host. Mm. We were using TSO host. Yeah. Uh, we were looking for another host because TSO were getting slow. Yeah. Uh, 500 errors. It's <laughs> horrible. I mean, the WordPress admin was sluggish. Just a yeah, real yeah, pain. Yeah. Um, so we're looking around and um, 34SP were recommended mm. by actually a WordPress group that I go to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I tried them out and the website speed was, were, well, it went from 0.5 seconds, yeah. which is okay, mm. down to 0.4 seconds. Yeah. Just by moving it over, um, <laughs> one and, simple and switch. And yeah, yeah, I mean, we were using we were using caching on the front end, which made it faster. Mm. But this was just instant. This speed was amazing, yeah. and um, yeah, it was, it was quite remarkable, really. And uh, why and it that? didn't just it didn't error. Why? Um, it, it's or? because uh, they weren't using shared hosting. No, uh, so I think TSO were just <laughs> putting more and more people on on it, and not really caring about the um, effect it had the on other people. Speed, yeah. Whereas um, 34SP, they have the virtual servers, they max out to 10, so they won't let you have more than 10 sites on, on any Insta like container. Mm. Oh, I can't remember what they call it, it was like a container. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that gives me confidence that they're pooling resources just for those sites. Okay. And it just makes a huge difference. Mm. And it, it, I, I don't know, everything's like even the admin, I just find easier. Yeah, it just yeah, is yeah. simple, it's just got what I, what I need. Yeah. Anything that is not there. I just ask them to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not manual. I just send them a support ticket like they're my own IT team saying, mm. can you do this for me? Uh, they even do migrations. <laughs> so in moving all our customers over, how many have we got there? Probably about 20 now that we've moved over. Um, I don't need to do it. I just ask them. To oh, do it. that's good. And it works. Mm. Like, I can do them, but it takes me an hour, maybe two. Yeah. They're on the T1 fast internet speed. It's just happened. I, I don't know how they do it. It's very quick. Right. <laughs> anyway, no <laughs> responses. Um, Why did you choose to get a sponsor? Do you know, 
Um, part of it is that the more I do, the more it's, it's um, a significant portion of the time I spend at work. True. So I wanted it to pay back a little bit. Yeah, I felt financially viable. Um, yeah, exactly. And pay pay for various fees. We've got the SoundCloud, which costs about one hundred and twenty dollars a year or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, we've got our hosting fees. I mean, they're all small, and we we have been funding it through rather than rented before. Um, but I felt that it would be nice mm -hmm. to do that to see if we can cover the costs. And you know, what? I think it validates it for me. It validates the podcast as, as a as a podcast that. Um, I don't know. All the podcasts I listen to, yeah. all the great, great shows, yeah. they all have sponsors, mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like sponsorship on podcasts because mm. it tends to be genuine, usually, not always, but usually it's quite genuine from the host. Mm. Um, and I feel, for me, it, I don't know, it, it makes me feel like it's a validated podcast. Yeah. And, and ultimately, you know, I, what I really enjoy is I love talking to people, mm. I love a good cup of coffee. Mm. And if I can move our business to be doing more video work, more podcasts mm. where I'm doing that, mm. brilliant. But I can't do that without it earning some revenue. Somehow. Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank okay. you. So we've, we've tried other things, like it, it being able to sponsor our own services. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of works, but it, it works because that's our, our business anyway. So mm. we, we're getting work through that. Well, if nothing else, what we do are experiments. Mm. So the reason we started the podcast was an experiment yeah, yeah, yeah. so that we can say to clients exactly what that process is. The reason we put it on YouTube is I can say what the process is. I can start to say how to get more views. Yeah. Same with the sponsorship. You know, I do see it as more long term, but each mm. one is an experiment. Yeah, um, just try and shit. And yeah, exactly. Going in. And I know when we spoke, I, I mentioned I have a problem starting the podcast. Mm. I always have a problem starting. I fixate on it far too much. Overthink it. Yeah, yeah. It was interesting that you just said just start, and I'm like, I know that I just got to start <laughs> somewhere. But I, you know, in my mind, I feel that we have a beginning, middle, and an end. Yeah, and that's how I approach it because it will minimise my editing. Mm. But you know what? Actually, doing the interviews over those three days, mm. I think there were around seven to eight of them, mm. uh, or maybe even more actually with attendees, that I rapidly got better. <laughs> Each one I was doing. I had to be quicker to mm. grab the people before they went off to do something. Yeah. And I just had to start. Yeah. In fact, it, it kind of went the other way where I was getting a bits of information like, who, who are you? Yeah, can yeah, you yeah, just yeah. tell me your name? Even if we don't use it, I can put a caption on there. Yeah. I know your name. Yeah. So there's a few things that I've, I've got better at over, do, over time. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I believe in that so much. Like the, just constantly doing stuff. I was at a festival and there was a photographer and he... He's American, so like, and he's talking about being in love and um, how his photos got better because he was in love. <laughs> and I, I, was just, I was just like, no, it's because you like have done it consistently over and over again yeah. and then you get better, like that, that compound interest. Like, and, and, I, like I, and then it was like the person I was with was just like, you do realise you, like, you just like completely put him down. Now. <laughs> but like, you said it out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was you like, echoed him. Oh, I didn't, but I didn't, it didn't mean like that. It was just like, yeah. you do something over and over again, yeah. you're going to get better at it. Yeah. That's what I think like with the videos and trying to edit and trying to do quick and yeah, just, just getting better and yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, there's a certain amount of not caring as well. Um, mm. And you've got to be careful about saying that because I do care about the output, but sometimes you can care too much. Mm. And if you overthink it and you over worry, like with the edit, editing the Bath Digital Festival stuff, I said it's around three days. Mm. I, I'm really not sure. I haven't, I haven't monitored it. But I'm, I was getting to the stage last night mm. where I was overthinking it. I was tweaking it here and there. And it's like most people won't, don't care. No. They're just going to listen to it once mm. and it's gone. Mm. But I wanted it to read right. And you know, that overthinking process is not good. No. Certainly there was no love, love involved at that no. point. <laughs> it was like, I just want this to be right. Yeah. So tell, tell me a little bit about you. Well, how did you get into this racket of video? Because it's, you know, I, I, I've got into it through wanting to do a podcast mm -hmm. and then we put it online. Okay. So how have you got into it? So I originally started by doing like photography just as a hobby. And then at my jobs that I was at, I was working as in marketing assistant and then executive a couple of different companies and just yeah wanted to do more of the creative stuff side of marketing rather than the strategic because I just think that's where my skills lie then it just led on to finally quitting my job taking at live full-time 
and just building up um, more clients, trying different stuff. Like I'm, I'm quite lucky in the sense that I get to work with clients who let me try shit. Mm. So like, yeah, that's important. If I see an idea and I'm like, this works so well for you, let's do it. And then like, yeah, they're really good at like, yeah, do it. Like, do you know what I mean? They trust my process. And but how do you how do you get clients like that? How do you find clients who who allow you that flexibility? So it takes time. It takes time to try and work with the people that you you want to work with, those that you build up a relationship with, not just a it's not just a transaction, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, well, that's not, I don't see it like that. So a lot of the time they come to me through word of mouth, which I think if you stick in your lane, and it's hard because it's really tempting to go for that big corporate who's going to pay me a lot of money to do a video, but it's not going to... It, it's not going to feel right to me. That's that's how I kind of feel it. It's not. Yeah, I wouldn't have your stamp on it. No, yeah. and I want. I try. And, I I want to. Yeah, I want. I want. I want to put my stamp on it. I want it. To, I want to. I want to be able to influence people for the positive rather than. Oh, just do a video and we'll pay you a load of money. Do you, Do you think with your videos, what What would you say your signature is? What would you say your style is? In terms of business, my my style is definitely quick. So I can. I'll plan the shoot in, in, mentally in my head. For the edit, yeah. So like, I shot a, a workout group um, on Tuesday. Oh, where was that? In Bristol, in yeah. Ocean. That was really good, actually. Yeah. Like drum and bass, so <laughs> my kind of thing. And then edited the video yesterday and had it over to them, and they were like, "Oh, that's really quick." Like, how did you do it so quick? And I was like, "Well, because I knew one the track I was going to use, two the styles that I wanted to do, and then yeah, so just making it quick, different in terms of like not boring." Mm -hmm. Hey, it's very, what does not boring mean? That's so, very subjective. Yeah. Boring to me is where it's very still shots. There's not a lot going on. Um, and don't get me wrong, I do really like cinematic when it's needed, but I think it's overused, a bit like the transitions. Like, people will use a lot of zoom transitions and whips and stuff like that that aren't totally aren't needed. And then the same with like cinematic. Yeah. People, a lot of YouTubers do it. They put in like loads of cinematic, but then the storyline's not there. Yeah. There's, they're lacking a whole element of the video just because they're trying to focus on making it look really smooth and nice. And yeah. Yeah, and then it loses everything. I, I, I don't know if it's used talking about this, but audio quality being absolute paramount because mm. if you haven't got that, however good it is, it's just going to fall flat. Yeah. But I think the same with story. Mm. That once you've got your audio to a good level, yeah. that you've got to have something interesting in there to mm. say. Otherwise, however good it looks, mm. it's it's going to be crap. People won't yeah. watch it, or they won't make it all the way through. And it's only going to be your peers who are looking at it from a technical point of view, but they're probably not the people you really want to share it with. No. No, yeah. Yeah. It is difficult. I mean, how did you get to that style? Because I'm still going through the process of finding a style. I t <laughs> I'll tell you how I do it. So I edit it, I'll make a mistake, and then it will end up looking good. <laughs> And no, but genuinely, like I'll try and do something, and then it won't do it properly. But I'll be like, actually, that looks really yeah, cool. Yeah. And then like I'm like, yeah, just like yeah, try and stuff. Like, and then I'll sit on YouTube. I'll try different things. I'll see what works. I'll see, yeah, just just trying to get comfortable with it. Where I'm like, actually, that's 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 but, me. Right? But you're not doing things because other people are doing it. No, you might try something out because you see it. But mm. but it's more about what what you like and having mm. your own style. Mm. Um, I'm quite interested in how you edit. Mm. in your process okay and I, I want to talk about mine a little bit as well so yeah. if they line up you've done all the filming work and I know in your talk you mentioned um, about getting lots of cutaway shots um, b-roll that you can use yeah um, to make it a bit more interesting you do the main talk or whatever mm. when you come to the edit how do you approach that right I've, I've, this is only recent this is so recent um, but firstly I'll put all the stuff together and by stuff I mean all the videos will go into one file uh, folder, sorry, all the graphics, so logos, um, anything else like that, will go into another folder, all the sound and audio will go into another folder, yeah. then that's all ready, I'll drag that all into Premiere Pro, so it's got a different bin for each, just like stick on some a mix or something, like an essential mix or whatever, like really long mix that's not, if it's with sound then you've got to kind of listen to it, which is kind of a little <laughs> bit different, <laughs> so like for example with the workout video, like I just put all the videos together and then I worked out which I think worked in a flow, add the, mu add the music and stuff, and unless I'm editing it to the music, or mm. add the sound, and then add, just add the different elements in, but do it all, all as one kind of bunch. Right. So bit video, dun, um, transitions, dun, 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 dun. And then it's almost like, 
you're adding layers to it. Yeah. Um, it reminds me of when I did like uh, music tech at college, learning about like the different stems of songs. There's so many different layers, especially in like dance music, which I'm what I'm into. Like the bass has has like three sub layers, and then it's like that makes that sound. So like I think I think of they it kind of kind resonate of, together, don't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. I kind of think of it like that. Build it as in in layers, and then when I'm doing some graphic work or something, it's like again, it's layers. Like yeah. everything, everything's in layers. <laughs> I read a book called Deep Work by a guy called Cal Newport. Mm. Um, I haven't read it, I've heard of it though. Such a good book. He talks about how like, we're very distracted with social media and email yeah. and phones and I've just turned off my phone, I just turn off my phone now. It's on flight mode. If I'm, if I'm in a deep work mode, where I'm like, right, I want to get this edit done in a couple of hours, I'm like, deep. Like, I, I, I'll even turn the lights off and like, put a candle on. <laughs> I get frothy all weird, <laughs> sat down at my desk. Just like, <laughs> mm, yeah, no, and I, I tell you why I like it is because like I can only see the screen. The yeah. camera just like gives a little bit of like yeah. nice smile, like just reduces that high contrast. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but with the sc- with the, with all the lights on, like you, yeah. it's so much easier to get distracted. Whereas if I just got the screen, it's just like boom, focus, especially in the dark. So. Yeah, and I know what you mean. I, I I have some work music. I don't know if you've heard of Anjuna Deep. Um, is actually recommended to a copywriting friend of mine. Um, and she, she, she recommended Anne Deep and they had a whole series of uh, albums. Um, but what I like about it is a few, a few vocal, vocals mm-hmm. in it. There are a few in there in some of the songs, but they're all quite beaty and mm-hmm. melodic and they just sort of flow very mm-hmm. nicely. Perfect. And like, I, I can always find that um, if I need to get flow, I'll listen to those. Mm-hmm. And, that, and now I've kind of trained my brain to sort of mm-hmm. go into that flow state by listening to it, except for video editing. I can't do it with that because I feel I've got to focus on the audio. I don't know why. Anything, anything else, uh, doing web work, mm. typing, blogging, whatever it might be. But video, no. Can't listen to anything else. Not even really quiet. It was just audio. Because I remember doing like, loads of edits for um, a corporate client and, and just it's just like an interview style. So it's like really mundane, really like... I wonder though if it would help, it help, um, help with the edit, the sort of pace of it listening to it mm. I, I've often found that just laying down a track I, I used to work for an exhibition company mm. and we would do tons of flash animations and videos and mm. just churn them out and I often found that if I just stick down a track mm. it doesn't really matter what the track is mm. but just an EDM track mm. I'll just animate to that yeah 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 and then that gave me a pace to it yeah 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 um, and that when, when they actually did want a track of music, I could almost sling anything in there mm. and pretty much fit. Yeah, yeah, because that, it had that, that, that feeling dun, of pace dun, to dun, it. Dun, and then you start dun. learning what that pace is and yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. can put that pace down without having any music. Mm. Maybe, maybe I'm still doing that, I don't know. So what, what's your kind of... So my process is, is, is kind of that. I want to... Um, I just get all well, the footage like from Bath Digital Festival. I just got it all on the, on the stage of iMovie mm. in sequence. Um, from A to B, whatever I recorded, it was just all in sequence. And then I just thought, start running through it and just chopping out the, the stuff that doesn't work very well. Mm. Um, there was a lot of, um, like you have B-roll cutaway shots mm. that I could slip in afterwards. But I put in all the main events and then I'll just watch each one. Mm. And just, I do a lot of hard cuts because we, uh, we edit for audio quality. Mm because it's mainly a podcast rather than a video. So there are <coughs> jump cuts in it. Mm. So just go through just chopping out anything that is a bit dull, <laughs> too many ums and ers, or they have to leave a few in, otherwise it's just completely unnatural. Or anything where someone just rambles, and that can include me, mm. and you just like bring it back again, <laughs> let's just make it a bit more interesting, and just go through and do that. Mm. And then actually with this one, because it was over three days, I needed people to feel that there was something ending and then beginning again. So what I did is just had these very standard slides with day one, day two, day mm. three in. And I got some road noise from okay. someone's clip somewhere yeah. and just put it on at the beginning. It's like, it's just the noise of a city. Mm. And so it, it's like an exclamation mark, but a quiet one. Mm. So you get to me talking uh, about the end of the day or whoever I was interviewing, mm. and it would then go quiet and we just have the traffic noise mm. for a three seconds. And on screen it says day one, mm. but if you're listening, it's just, it's just quiet. Mm. And then I go into back uh, in Bath for, for day two and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. And I found that really useful as little junctions to, mm. to, to break everything down a little bit. I wanted it to look good from a mm. video point of view, but I also knew that most people would be listening to the audio. Yeah. And you can't just have something on screen. You can't have text on screen. You can't have something that is very meaningful visually, mm. but means nothing to people when they don't hear it. Mm. So I, I put a lot of speeded up um, tape screeching. Yeah. And I, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and I almost I used varying elements of. Uh, I did an interview with Jack Cook mm. uh, on the first day, 
<laughs> because we're both chatting away and it made this perfect sort of screechy fast forward tape noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just used that every every point where I wanted to cut or um, move between sections, mm. I put in this <laughs> to sort of make it feel like we're fast forwarding through the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than having this very nice um, national public mm. is it national public radio. What's the one in the states? NPR. NPR. National, yeah, 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 national public radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very polished, yeah. the rate over the top of us. I, I just don't have time for that. No, no, no. So it's, you've got to find a way of slinging together a lot of disparate bits of content from my yeah. office, from on the street, from interviews in different mm. situations with different echo and different quality levels. Mm. Hopefully it worked. We'll find out when it comes out shortly. <laughs> but yeah, the basic process is I just put everything down in mm. the sequence I shot it and then just go through and chop, 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 chop mm. and then come back to the beginning and run through again and run through mm. again. Just, as you say, layering up. Yeah. Maybe putting some music on, putting some graphics over the yeah, top. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know in yours, uh, we were talking about your hairy leg photo. Yeah. And you went slap to the camera. Yeah. So I need to get that bit of footage from you. Put that on there. <laughs> I haven't made that ten times on. <laughs> <laughs> I use that a lot, actually. I think we used, I think, have I used it on the front cover? Because you're doing this and covering mm. up the Bath Digital logo. Which, or covering, sort of signifying it. Um, and then I used some of your camera footage in there as mm. well. I've got a question on that. Okay. So your camera footage looks really good, mm. but it looks dark. Is there any post-processing you do to it? Because it must have a better range than my iPhone, which is mm. what I shoot everything on. Um, I'm, I'm sure you must do some post-processing to sort of widen it back out again. My picture profile that I shoot in is, it's not an S-Log, um, I can't remember what it is on Sony, I know it's PP1, but um, basically it makes it look, it kind of looks dull, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, the skin looks a bit dull, and that just gives me more flexibility in terms of so I can go and stretch it out and like make the this orange of the skin pop or certain elements of it pop. Just because again, like if I want to, sh if, if a client's got more of an airy kind of light, softer feel, then I'll go for that. Or if they're more like a fitness, they've got more kind of a grungy, contrasty feel. Right. Then I can. There's more flexibility. So you're packing more dynamic range in there, basically, mm. so you can play. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I just couldn't figure out because I'm only doing an iMovie. Mm. I, I know Claire; she works in uh, Final Cut, mm. but I'm only doing an iV movie. That's my program mm. choice; it works. But I couldn't figure out how to stretch it back out again. I knew it was something like that. Yeah, but yeah, just, yeah, yeah. So um, do they have a color profile in in iMovie? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know. It's very limited. Mm. I need to move to Final Cut. Really, mm. I'm 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 really pushing against its boundaries. But yeah, unfortunately, they look a little bit dark. I did try my best mm. to, to match them in, but yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. I I remember so Jack shot mine, and then I shot mine on on my camera, um, and it yeah, it just looks completely different mm. because he's got a Canon, he's not got a picture profile on his, so his his looks very natural and, and nice colours, um, but then mine. Yeah, it just looks really grey, and I was like, ah, trying to match it up. And Yours stuff. just needs a bit more work post processing, but you've probably got more dynamic range to play with. Yeah, and I just think, yeah, like I said, it gives me that flexibility with the with the clients, depending on who I'm working with and stuff. But mm -hmm. um, like, what camera do you use? Why do you use it? Okay, uh, so the camera I use is a Sony A7 Mark II. I did want to get the A7 i mark ii which shoots at like 4k 120 frames per second mm. but it was just cost at the, at, like when starting out i i know i needed a new camera um but i couldn't justify an extra grand and a half on the camera <laughs> that um i didn't really have the need for yet sony i i just kind of got attracted to them because i used to use canon feel of the sony it just feels nice um and then the, the dynamic range in terms of the lighting it works so much better in darker light compared to other cameras. Uh, the mic I use on that is a video Rode Mic Pro, the one that I've got on that. It's so that sits, sits on the top? Directional, um, just to pick up noise, and if that cuts on me, then I have got. So what is that? Zoom H6 recorder. Ah. Um, it works kind of like a camera, in terms of like, let's say this is the camera body, this is the lens, mm -hmm. you can like change different. So if I wanted to have a, um, a directional long mic, you can buy a, a plug-in for Right, that. so you, you can plug on different mics into the body mm. depending on what you're trying to do. Yeah, so yeah. say I, I was trying to do more of an interview format, I could have that on a, on a, on a boom stand right. over the top, just pointing down to the person so you haven't got all the kind of wires and mics in front of them. And this is a stereo mic setup you've got on there? Yeah. Like does a, yeah. yeah. Then it's also got, so it's got up to six channels so I can have the, the mics which um, XLR and then just an AKG mic that goes in handheld 
and then right. you've got, so yeah, you've got a, vari a variety really depending on the situation you're in and what you need at the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it, um, for the price, it was like a really good price, like 100, 250, I think it was for the that. Which like for what? And bear in mind, I can like keep that in in the camera bag. Yeah, it doesn't take up that much room, and I can like set out in in nature doing trying to get some nice cinematic shots. I can get that sound that. Because to me, like in video, and I've only just learned this, like sound design is so important in terms of yes. how it tells the story. And like I didn't, I didn't realize it. And I was like, you know, when I started doing it, I was like, oh my god, like my work's like so much better now that I've just it, it, like taken an hour to, and it takes time. That sound design takes time to the water or the or the flag or do you know what I mean? Like the little things you don't think. Have you have you listened? Do you ever listen to Radio Four? No. You should, if you want to hear interesting sound design, yeah. or if it re where they really focus on it, yeah. uh, that l go and listen to some of the documentaries on Radio mm. 4. Because, you know, you hear that flag flapping in the wind, mm. that's what they'll open with. And yeah. you just, they'll, they'll sort of fade up, you hear the flag really crisp, and then go into their conversation. They're walking over, over sand, and it's crunchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. really get all those details. Because they've got nothing else, there's no, no. visual there. No, no, so no. they're really focused just mm. on that. Um, no, I know. Yeah, it is important. So why go for this sort of setup rather than something where you're hooking a mic directly off the camera? Because you've got a lot more work involved in terms of lining up the audio. Why mm. do you do it this way? More flexibility in terms of I can use the audio from that. The quality's better, I think, in, um, because again, that that's multi-track. So yeah. say one side's a little bit louder, I can take it down. Right. Whereas if I go straight into the mic, there's not the ability to, That's do you know it. what I mean? Like, so say you're a bit louder, or I'm a bit louder than you, yeah. I can I can do that in post and, and go, oh yeah, and then it sounds nice. Whereas if I just record it straight from the mic, the camera, and then like you get, you always get one person that's really loud and then one person that's really quiet. You also had something when, when at Bath Digital, you had a little clip mm -hmm. on your shirt. Is that, was that a mic too? So that were that was actually Jack. So I was borrowing. Thank okay. you, Jack. Um, <laughs> uh, so that that's a Rode mic. Yeah. Um, a lapel mic. They've only just recently brought it out. I'm definitely going to get one. Yeah, looks um, good. So that goes directly into the camera. Yeah. Attaches to you. You can have um, like a little lapel mic clip, and then that will be like the receiver. Yeah. But you can use that bit just as directly. a standalone. Yeah. And it's good quality. Like all my stuff from the Bath Digital Festival that I've been putting out is is from that mic. Directly from so. that. So yeah, definitely gonna get one of those because just just for like if I'm having a conversation or if I'm having a meeting, then I can pick up my audio without having to set up. Yeah, I uh, know, I and I think I'm gonna go that approach. At the moment, I've just got a, a mic tethered to mm. the camera. I think even if I do continue with that, I will probably have a secondary recording mm. system. Cool. Is there anything else we need to talk about in terms of video that that is like crucial for people to understand in terms of producing it? Just start, really. Yeah. Just like start, because. Because you you're gonna you're not gonna think your work's good and like no one thinks their work's good at start at the start that it is it's shit and like you you will look back and you'll go that's terrible <laughs> but then it's just it's that process of doing it over and over again getting better learning and yeah just understand that you're not gonna it's not gonna be good it's not gonna be perfect just put stuff out there and I think yeah let people give their two cents on it like let mm. people say their their views on it because then that's how you improve especially if, like. There is someone who who is in the video agents industry, and um, they can give you advice on the color or the sound or the. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. then you learn, and then you're like, oh yeah, maybe that that sound the, the color does look a little bit too cold and doesn't feel right. And like I've done that with like with client work, I'll send it to people before I send it to the client, just because then I can get their views on it. Yeah. Before, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, someone who's not connected at all, really, yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, the, yeah. what you've just been working on. Because cause you, if you've been working on something, you're blind to any of its um, mm. uh, mistakes or mm. inconsistencies. Cool. So just before we finish, mm. so, something I, I, I ask a lot of people. Is there something that you've read, watched, a tool you've used recently that you, you just want to tell people about that is so good? It, could be, it doesn't have to be related to video. Oh, I've got loads. You can have you can have two. Two. Alright. So the book that I mentioned earlier, which isn't gonna class as one, because uh, so then there's another book called um The Inner Game of Tennis. Oh, I've not heard of that. I can't remember who it's by, I'll send it to you. But yeah, uh it's this it's, it's a tennis book, but it's not. And it talks about how we've got a South One and a South Two, and the South One is the one that puts you down and it, it's like, oh you're shit, you're rubbish, you're, and the South Two is the one that actually does the work. But it's it's about trying to quiet quieting down the South One 
to say, right, just watch it, view it, and, and understand what's happening, but don't have an opinion on it. Yeah. Because we're so good to praise ourselves and go, oh, that's really good work, but we're also really, oh, that's shit, that's horrible. Yeah, that's, yeah very self-critical. Yeah, yeah um, and it, it just kind of talks about doing the work and, and just letting it happen Yeah. And, and that kind of flow state that you said earlier. So what's that called, the inner? In a game of tennis. In a game of tennis. Yeah. Okay, you can have one more. I'd say, yeah, the, the, so I've only just discovered this new tool where how I can make a Lightroom LUT, which is a part of the Adobe Cloud. Um, you can edit images using Lightroom. And then I can make a Lightroom LUT how, I, so basically I could use it, convert it into a Premiere Pro LUT so that I can have the images look the same as the video. Okay, so like cut the colour balancing. Yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit different, but basically you can make um, make the LUT in Lightroom. LUT. LUT. So it's like a I can't remember what it stands for, but basically um, it's how the image looks. Okay. And you can have a preset that's saved, so it like you can just add this. So LUT. every so every image from that camera, run it through the preset, it's gonna look like the yeah. way you want it to. So, so how I do it is I, I I actually make LUTs for my clients. So like. Ah, SNES yeah. has got a certain look, yeah. LP's got a certain look, I've got a certain look, At Live's got a certain look. Yeah. I can just hit it and then edit the little tweaks to maybe bring the image up or take it down. But I've like found a way now that I can make that but in Premiere Pro instead of, um, so I can yeah, use, use Lightroom to make and it. I do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a tool, I can't remember what it's called, it's a little tool that you have to download for Mac. and. Yeah, really that sounds pretty cool. I think probably a bit a bit advanced for me in terms of managing mm. it. Although uh, <laughs> it, it is something I'm creeping towards. Yeah, I'm, yeah, slowly, yeah. I'm slowly getting towards that sort of doing it professionally. Mm. Cool. Where can we find you online? Where's the best place for people to go and uh, check you out? So my personal brand is just at edwardwhite.al, um, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and then obviously at live if they want to see the work and stuff. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. Cool. Cheers. Thank you. Dick and boom, 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 dick and bo